Hey, Jason Heath here. And I've been doing a lot of thinking since this coronavirus pandemic started about routines. And I've always held to my personal routine as, as best as I can. It's sort of my lifeline. It keeps me balanced and it's been a challenge now being at home all the time and just sort of adapting to that. So I thought it would be hopefully helpful to talk through the way that I approach my routine, maybe the way I approach my routine in general in life, and then also how that's changed since this pandemic has hit. I've always enjoyed getting out of the house for part of every day. That joy has certainly vanished, mostly at least, here in San Francisco. Now everybody's walking around with face masks and everything's boarded up. And so even though that's the case, I still am trying to get out of the house as much as I can. So I've been starting my day outside as much as possible. I got my hyacinths here. They're getting kind of droopy. Um, and this table has sort of been my lifeline. Even if I can't really get outside much of the day or certainly enjoy my time outside, I try to start my day out there when it's not raining. And what I do when I've been doing it for, I think this is day 528 or something like that, is practice Spanish. I still can't speak Spanish, but I can speak more than I could 528 days ago, that's for sure. And that has helped to kind of keep me grounded. Actually just looking at that number, 528, uh, and thinking back to you know all those days, it sort of helped me to put this pandemic maybe in a time perspective. I used to have a full-time job I used to teach high school orchestra, and I've, of course, gigged a lot over the years. But as I've sort of coalesced around this blog and podcast, and that kind of work, I've really spent a lot of time when I'm home working by myself. Now, I, I do try in normal circumstances to get out of the house for at least a couple days a week. I have a couple co-working spaces I like to go to. One of my local cafes is a great place to get some work done. So I do try to shift it up. That's not really an option now, but that outdoor space has been helpful. And then just trying to have kind of a normal uh, work uh, schedule has helped a lot. So I try to get going around 7 a.m., maybe 8 a.m. By the time 5 comes, I am done with work unless there's some really strange circumstance. And I find that just really boxing it in in that kind of a schedule has been helpful for me for just maintaining my sanity for not letting, back when I started blogging and podcasting, I'd work till 10 p.m., I'd work till midnight, I'd, I'd do all sorts of things like that. Moving to San Francisco five years ago gave me a little more space in my life to, um, to schedule things out. So I practice Spanish to start off the day, then I check my email, and I used to not do this. I used to delay that email check until like 10 a.m. or something like that, but more recently, the last couple of months, I've been practicing Spanish and then checking email and trying to do all that in under 30 minutes. So if I start at, let's say, 6 a.m., by 6.30, I am done. I have to get out of there. And I process to zero every time I open my email when I'm at home. Uh, I can think of maybe like one or two times over the last few years where I haven't gotten to zero. And so by giving me that limit, I either I respond quickly, I archive or delete, or I forward to Evernote if it's something I need to deal with later. But I just try to clear the table for the creative work, which is the next part of my day. So sometimes I use a Pomodoro timer when I'm working throughout the day. So I put 25 minutes on the timer, it goes off, I take a five minute break and I do another 25. I don't do that every single day, but I find especially if it's a task I'm not super jazzed about, uh, that can be a really good way to just make sure I'm working. And just seeing that timer tick down, it makes me just kind of move through things a little more quickly. Now, sometimes for creative tasks, I find it's better to not have that timer going and, and just to sort of let myself drift and think and brainstorm and all that kind of thing. So I start off with Spanish, I start off with email, then I make myself a breakfast that has some good protein. I always go through phases like breakfast sandwiches or burritos or something like that. But I really like the chopping of the vegetables and the making the coffee, 
grinding the beans and just that physicality of making breakfast. Uh, I've always liked doing that. Even when I had a full-time job and I had a commute, I'd try to do that. So I do that, take a shower and get dressed. And now I am not uh, a fancy dresser. <laughs> you know, I look like a tech worker. I'll have a hoodie on when it's cold out outside, but I don't just lounge around the house in my PJs and work. I've never liked doing that since I've been working from home. Uh, and so I just try to treat it like a job. This is what I would wear to the job. So I know it's not fancy, but I'm not uh, just lounging around in the clothes I had on last night. After that, I go back to this table here, if it's not raining, which generally it's not, and I chart out my day. I have an app I use called Notability and I sketch out, I have one note for the week and I give myself a page for every day. So I sketch out what I want to do that day and I put the creative stuff first. Those are the projects that I just have to get done in the morning. I can be creative, I can work on creative projects in the afternoon, but I'm never quite as good as I am in the morning with that. So I get settled in and start off my morning with my creative projects and I've got this nice big table that we just got with the new place you can see. I'm filming a video so I got all my lenses, got my laptop, I was doing some podcast editing and intros and outros so I've got all that sort of gear set up here and our place is small in San Francisco so we got this room and then we've got the bedroom and we're just kind of getting set up here. We've got nice outdoor space, there's my wife's harp which she plays every once in a while. So the space is not big, but uh, it works for us if we set it up as a multi-purpose space. So this becomes my workstation during the day and I got the kitchen right there. If it was a, a co-working space, I'd be going and getting a cup of coffee or getting a sandwich. Can't really do that uh, in the pandemic. So this will have to do. But I sit down and dig into whatever that creative task is. So today it was putting the final touches on the next four podcast episodes. It might be a consulting project I'm working on or some sort of event that's coming up. But whatever that big, juicy, creative thing that I know is gonna take more cognitive energy, that's what I dig into. And I start doing that kind of work around 8 a.m. generally, and I go till about 11 a.m. And I may only do one project, but more often I'll do one project, you know, with maybe two of those hours or two and a half, and then I try to work on a couple smaller things that are a little less uh, creatively demanding or creatively intense. I usually break for an early lunch, kind of around 11 a.m. I've always sort of liked that rhythm, and I'll read a book, and I'll just sort of take a few moments here. Now that I'm at home, I go outside a lot of the time just for a few minutes out on the balcony. And then my afternoon work, I can get good stuff done, but it's never going to be as creative. It never seems to be for me as creative. Those really cool aha moments or the sort of serendipitous creative moments that's almost always happening for me in that 8 to 11 a.m. time. So I guard that time with my life. For me, practicing is something that happens later in the day. I generally don't pull out my bass until three or four in the afternoon. And now if I was making my income mostly from performing, which I make some from performing, that's definitely not the bulk of what I do, what I think of as my work. You know, it's a thing I do, it's on the list, but it's never number one. It's usually not even in the top five, but I do practice every day. I use the app Modacity. I love that app for practicing. So I use that, but that's gonna be later in the afternoon and I usually hit a slump around 3 p.m., 4 p.m. or something like that. But for whatever reason, I can still play bass during that slump. So I usually reserve bass until then. Now, when I do practice in the morning, if I have something coming up, that's a great time. That is a great time for me on the bass too. But since the work on the computer, the blog and the podcast and the other projects I work on, since I think of that as really my job, I give my best hours to that kind of work. And then by 5 p.m. I'm done. I'm hanging outside, uh, sometimes at that table, but I'm usually, we've got this nice outdoor couch set up that we got here. My wife is a radiologist. She works fairly regular hours. It's part of why I quit at five, because she comes home at five, and then we hang out out here. Sit out, 
talk about the day, very uh, traditional sort of couple thing to do. I also take one day a week and have it be my audio visual day. So that's today, I'm recording the video, that's why all my gear's out for that. When I do podcast interviews, I try to have one day and I schedule them all on that one day so that I'm not fragmenting uh, the rest of my week with interviews all the time. So that seems to be working for me in terms of a schedule. When I'm on the road, I still try to maintain that practicing Spanish, that first email check, um, but then I'm easy on myself. I don't expect to get any projects done, but on the road is when I'm recording podcasts live with people normally, uh, when I'm at an event, working an event, that sort of thing. So that's just a different time, a different phase of life. And I think of that as the fuel for my projects that I then work on when I'm at home. So I go to an event, I collect video, photos, audio, all that sort of stuff. Then I come home and I do my writing, I do my videos, I do my other forms of media that way. I also, this is something I've tried to do for a while and it seems to work pretty well. I only check email twice a day. So I have that initial morning email check and then in the early to mid afternoon, let's say one to 2 p.m., maybe two to 3 p.m., I hop on email one more time, process it to zero and any sort of tasks that the world is giving me, you know, those little things, uh, whether for me it's a lot of like sharing things out or checking in on something or checking out this video or getting my two cents on X, Y, or Z, that all goes into Evernote for me and I have it. That all goes into Evernote for me and I have a note, that all goes into Evernote for me and I have a note in Evernote just called backlog and that's something that I every couple of days just hop in and for 20, 25 minutes I just chug through as many of those items as I can. So that's how I approach working at home. I've been doing that for years and I think the, the takeaways that would hopefully help anybody regardless of the sort of work you do is just you can you can be it's hard if you haven't worked a lot from home and it's easy to not take it seriously but I find that keeping to a regular schedule knowing my own personal rhythms which are again morning is really my time to be creative and to put out higher quality content uh, I save the administrative stuff and the phone calls and that sort of stuff for the afternoon whenever I can and I really have a hard stop time I find that that works well for me I'm a big fan of the saying people overestimate what they can do in a day and underestimate what they can do in a month I think that's really true and and when I look at my schedule I really am only giving myself probably you know especially with that audiovisual day maybe 12 to 15 uh, really productive hours a week, those, that 8 to 11 time, but I just try to take it super seriously when I do have that time and, and work, I just say to myself, work like a professional. Sit down, put my butt in the chair, and just get things done, make progress on those projects, sketch out the week, check in the next week to see uh, how am I accomplishing those goals, really trying to focus on what's important in that juicy time for me, which is that morning block. So I hope you found that helpful. I'd love to know about your routine. Let me know what you're doing. You likely have a different setup in terms of practicing than I do, but I just love hearing about people's routines and how they figure out to work in with their own internal rhythms. So let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, what we always say on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video.